On September 7, 2025, the world watched the moon vanish behind Earth's shadow. Yet what truly stunned sky watchers came moments later, the sky erupted neon green from horizon to horizon. Amateur astronomers captured a streaking icy blue comet that shifted, impossibly, to a glowing emerald, and the color clung to the night even after the eclipse ended. Forums spiraled into chaos as professionals scrambled for answers. That was the night 3i slash Atlas arrived, our third interstellar visitor, accelerating past Mars at 98 kilometers per second, carrying mysteries no telescope on Earth was ready for. Why would a comet from another star system paint our skies with a color science can't fully explain? Hours after the eclipse, the first images trickled in from backyard telescopes in Buenos Aires, Nairobi, and the outskirts of Lisbon. On the raw frames, a pale blue streak cut across the shadowed sky, its hue deepening to a saturated green that refused to fade even as the moon slid free of Earth's shadow. In Sao Paulo, a student with a borrowed DSLR caught the color shift in a burst of 10-second exposures. The timestamps, anchored to 0318 UTC, lined up with a sudden spike in amateur chatter. Never seen that shade of green holding after the eclipse. The color, the speed, it's screaming, not local. In Cape Town, a retired engineer logged the object's angular movement through a 6-inch Newtonian, noting a velocity so rapid that even a few minutes between shots showed a clear displacement against the star field. The comet's apparent motion, nearly a quarter degree per hour, defied expectations for any known solar system visitor. Across Europe, observers compared notes on the persistent emerald glow, arguing over filters and calibration, but the raw data told the same story. The green lingered, refusing to wash out under city lights or fade with the moon's return. In the hours that followed, forum threads ballooned with uploads, stacked images, spectral traces, hand-drawn sketches. Metadata poured in, coordinates, exposure times, filter bands. A teacher in rural Turkey posted a time-lapse that captured the color transition frame by frame, while a high school club in Morocco measured the comet's position shift against background stars, confirming its breakneck pace. By dawn, the evidence was global and unmistakable. The object's color and speed were unlike any comet in living memory. Amateur networks, usually slow to agree, converged on a single conclusion. This was no ordinary visitor. The world's professionals, still silent, were about to receive a data flood they couldn't ignore. By 0700 UTC, the phrase, night the sky went green, had already become a hashtag. The world's telescopes, from backyard rigs to 10-meter giants, were now pointed at a single, fast-moving green visitor. The handoff from public curiosity to scientific urgency was complete, the clock was ticking, and every minute counted. Inside the Atlas control room on July 1, 2025, the first data drop from Rio Hurtado triggered a familiar script. Run the detection through the orbit solver, check for known asteroids, flag anything out of place. But the software stalled. Each attempt to fit a closed, elliptical orbit spat out residuals that refused to settle. The numbers pointed to a path that didn't loop back, didn't belong to the sun. Eccentricity above one, hyperbolic. Not just a statistical fluke, but a mathematical wall. A small team of analysts gathered around the screen, watching as the residuals climbed with every tweak. Standard protocols called for waiting, collect more data, rule out a spurious detection, avoid clogging the confirmation pipeline with false alarms. But the object's apparent speed and trajectory kept breaking the model. A log entry at 0314 UTC captured the unease. If this is real, it's interstellar. If not, we waste the world's time. One analyst, recalling the panic of Oumuamua's discovery, pushed for escalation. The minor planet center was pinged, flagged with an urgent note. Fits unclosed, eccentricity greater than one, possible ISO candidate. The debate in the control room turned from caution to calculation. How many hours until follow-up would be impossible? Every minute lost meant a shrinking window. By 0500 UTC, the team moved as a unit, prepping the alert for global distribution. The interstellar flag was raised. For the third time in history, the software could not bind the orbit to the sun. The minor planet center alert went out at 0, 
512 UTC on July 1, 2025, stamped with the object's preliminary designation and a warning, orbit fitting failed, eccentricity above one, outbound velocity unbound. Within hours, the object acquired a formal name, 3i slash Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar object after Oumuamua and Borisov. The datasheets told the story in numbers. At Discovery, 3i slash Atlas was already moving at 61 kilometers per second, and trajectory models projected a perihelion speed close to 98 kilometers per second. That's fast enough to cross the distance from Earth to the Moon in just over an hour, far beyond the reach of any probe, rocket, or planned interceptor. Orbit dynamics specialists, some of whom had spent years modeling hypothetical extrasolar visitors, watched the residuals climb in real time. The hyperbolic path was clear. This was a one-time pass, a cosmic drive-by that would never repeat. The official circulars flowed. C slash 2025 N1 Atlas, reclassified as 3I slash Atlas, flagged as interstellar and added to the short, exclusive list of solar system trespasses. The impossibility of interception settled in quickly. No existing mission, not even the fastest solar sail concepts, could hope to match velocity or trajectory. With the closest approach to Mars set for October 3, 2025, at nearly 29 million kilometers, the window for in situ study was vanishingly narrow. The notification process, once a formality, now triggered a global scramble for remote observations. Every telescope, every spectrograph, every available eye was needed before 3i slash Atlas slipped away for good. Spectrographs from La Palma and Gemini South began streaming in before sunrise, their raw outputs combed by gas phase analysts searching for the familiar fingerprint of C2, the molecule behind the classic green glow in nearly every comet on record. But the data told a different story. Instead of the sharp swan bands near 516 and 563 nanometers, the green region was dominated by a broad, featureless plateau. Line by line, the expected dicarbon signature was absent. Infrared scans layered on another surprise. Carbon dioxide, not water, towered above the rest. CO2 outnumbered H2O by a factor of 8, a ratio seen in no comet from the inner solar system. The usual water-driven chemistry was flipped on its head. Cyanogen, a molecule that sometimes boosts blue-green hues, appeared in modest quantities. Carbonyl sulfide barely registered. Neither could account for the intensity or persistence of the green emission. In the control rooms, specialists swapped hypotheses in real time. Some pointed to dust scattering, but polarimetry trends argued against a simple explanation. Others ran through lists of rare radicals and exotic volatile compounds, but none matched the observed color. The absence of C2 left a chemistry-shaped hole at the heart of the anomaly. For now, the only certainty was that 3i slash Atlas had rewritten the color rulebook. The green glow was real, unmistakable, and, by every standard measure, unexplained. Spectrographs from the world's largest telescopes began to light up with an unexpected signature. More than 20 distinct nickel lines, several in the ultraviolet, all standing out with a sharpness that left little doubt. Iron, usually the partner in any comet's metal emission, barely registered. A handful of weak lines, some right at the detection threshold, most missing entirely. The ratio was so lopsided that, in some frames, nickel outshone iron by a factor of 50 or more. For comet chemists, this was a chemical fingerprint from another world. Laboratory teams, some still running overnight cryo-chamber experiments, scrambled to match the spectra. Nickel carbonyls, volatile at temperatures colder than any solar system comet, became the leading suspect. In the lab, these compounds can sublimate at minus 25 degrees Celsius, but in the deep interstellar dark, they might linger for billions of years, waiting for a stray sun to pass close enough to trigger release. Iron, by contrast, tends to lock into silicates or heavy grains, tough, refractory, and stubbornly invisible to the spectrograph. Polarimetry added another twist. The dust grains in 3i Atlas scattered light with a deep negative polarization, a pattern seen mostly in the outer solar system, trans-Neptunian objects, not inner comets. That, combined with early Hubble imaging, 
pointed to a compact nucleus, likely no more than a few kilometers across, wrapped in a CO2 rich coma. The physics of this dust, tightly packed, submicron, and unusually cohesive, suggested a birthplace far beyond the frost line of any ordinary star. For planetary scientists, the stakes sharpened. The chemistry on display wasn't just exotic, it was a direct clue to the way planets and comets form in the coldest reaches of the galaxy. The clock was ticking for lab replication. With Hubble and JWST soon to be blinded by the sun, all eyes turned to Mars orbiters for a last shot at capturing the metal vapor and dust physics before three. I slash Atlas vanished into deep space. Mars became the fallback. With Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope locked out by solar elongation, the only way to catch three I slash Atlas during its critical pass was from orbit around another planet. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and MAVEN, both deep into their own science campaigns, faced a sudden, high-stakes retasking order. On September 10, 2025, a classified memo from NASA's Planetary Science Division landed in the mission manager's inboxes. Prepare for a target of opportunity campaign, effective immediately. The object would sweep within 29 million kilometers of Mars on October 3rd. A distance close enough for high-resolution ultraviolet and infrared instruments to dissect its coma and tail, but only if the window was seized. The politics were fierce. Mars climatology teams fought to keep their seasonal data uninterrupted, citing years of baseline measurements at risk. Engineers scrambled to rewrite targeting software, repoint sensors, and negotiate observation slots with international partners. Congressional science committees weighed in, demanding the unique interstellar event take priority. In the end, the science division broke protocol, pushing through full approval in just 48 hours, a process that usually drags on for weeks. By September's end, the Mars outpost was on alert. Instrument teams rehearsed rapid-fire observation sequences, knowing the comet's speed, nearly 98 kilometers per second at perihelion, left little margin for error. On October 3rd, as 3i slash Atlas made its closest pass, both orbiters captured spectra, ultraviolet flashes, and atmospheric readings impossible from Earth. In three hours, MAVEN returned more data on metal vapor and coma structure than most missions gather in a season. The gamble paid off. Mars, for a brief window, became humanity's only eyes on an interstellar visitor. In late 2025, software engineers at TESS and the Rubin Observatory confronted a hard truth. 3. I slash Atlas had slipped past their algorithms not once, but twice. Archival frames from October 2023 and June 2024 showed faint, fast-moving traces, barely above the noise, but real. Detection pipelines, tuned to filter out hyperbolic or color-odd candidates to avoid false alarms, had quietly discarded the very signals that mattered most. The postmortem was swift and unsparing. Machine learning developers, some still sifting through old logs, began rewriting code to flag outlier trajectories and green-leaning color bursts in real time. The new mandate, no more missed interstellar visitors, even if it meant more false positives and midnight phone calls. Mission architects, watching the data review unfold, pushed for a more radical fix. If software can't guarantee early warning, then hardware must be ready to launch at a moment's notice. Proposals for rapid response interceptors, solar sailcraft, modular instrument swarms, even disposable CubeSats, moved from whiteboards to funding decks. The technical specs are bold, launch within weeks, ride solar pressure to match hyperbolic speeds, and swarm any inbound object with sensors before it vanishes. NASA, ESA, and private teams weighed rival blueprints, each promising the agility that 3i slash Atlas had exposed as missing. For the next visitor, the plan is clear. Survey triggers fire on odd colors and unbound orbits. Interceptor fleets stand ready, not just to watch from afar, but to meet the next interstellar messenger halfway. The lesson of three, I slash Atlas is written into every line of code and every mission concept. Cosmic surprises demand readiness, not regret. On October 2025, three, I slash Atlas passed within 29 million kilometers of Mars. 
its closest approach captured by Mars orbiters after Earth telescopes went offline. Confirmed as only the third interstellar object ever detected, its 98 km per second perihelion speed and hyperbolic path were verified in Atlas and Minor Planet Center records. Spectra revealed intense neon green light, yet the classic C2 swan bands were absent. Instead, carbon dioxide dominated over water by 8 to 1, and more than 20 strong nickel lines appeared without matching iron, breaking known comet patterns. Despite global observations and urgent data collection, the true chemical source of the green glow remains unresolved. Archival tests and Rubin data showed early traces missed by older software, prompting survey upgrades and mission proposals for rapid interception. 3i slash Atlas has left, but its anomalies force a new standard. Every interstellar visitor brings unique evidence about planetary origins, and readiness depends on what we learn from each one.